So if you don't already know what SEMrush is, it's an awesome SEO tool that helps you do search engine optimization research, track keywords, view competition, run SEO audits, find backlinking opportunities, find and fix SEO issues, and a whole lot more. This isn't something I normally discuss because on my YouTube channel, I mainly just cover WordPress topics, but learning WordPress has really helped me to build out several profitable blogs and some other very high earning non-blog type websites over the years. So the truth is when used correctly, a tool like SEMrush alone can pay for itself with just one good blog post or one article or one backlink that you find or one opportunity. So it's really, really worth taking advantage of in my opinion because of the data that you're getting from all of the analytics that are within SEMrush here. What's even better is something like the SEMrush Keyword Magic Tool can help you potentially find hundreds of great keyword related topics to cover on your websites or blogs, even on your social media channels as well, such as this YouTube video. So there's so much that it can actually do and it can easily just pay for itself by using it the right way. Another thing that I wanted to cover quickly is the amount of time that SEMrush actually saves you when you're doing keyword research. If you're considering things like other SEO tools, just know that I've been through this and I've spent so many hours on various SEO tools only to have them either stop working, completely disappear, no longer keep up with the data, or just provide bad information. You know with a tool like SEMrush and the amount of time and money they've spent investing in the product that it's not going to go anywhere and it's going to provide you with top end results, high end results of what is actually going on within the search engines. So that alone is worth the value in my opinion. So the best tool that I think SEMrush actually has to offer is the Keyword Magic Tool. So if we were to go over to Keyword Analytics within our account, go to Keyword Magic Tool, we can see that we can search for different keywords right within the Keyword Magic Tool here. Because of how powerful this tool is, I thought it would be the best one to cover within this SEMrush review and tutorial here. So let's dive into actually using this and see what kind of results we can get if we were looking for articles to write for a blog or website. So I'm gonna get started by just typing in web design here. And I just wanna point out before I even start, it says our database is constantly growing. It has over 18.9 billion keywords in it, 14 million ideas for a single keyword, and 118 geo databases. So I'm gonna use the US database here and type in web design and just click search. It's gonna take a moment to come up with the results here, but we're gonna see what it spits out for us. Now, by default, we can see that it gives us the broad match for our search term here. And it says there is over 100,000 keywords, 137,000 plus at this time. So if you just think about that for a moment, we have potentially over 100,000 topics that we could cover within this. Now I know all these topics aren't going to be good to write about, but that's how we actually get started here and see what the base is and we can work off of that. So you can actually go over here and use things like the phrase match to narrow it down a little bit. And you can see the number went from 137,000 to 108,000. And then if you wanted to search for the exact match phrase of web design, you can do that here. And it goes down to 96,000. And you can also do relate it over here to bring that even more narrowed down here to a lower amount of keywords. And that brings us to down to just 1,817. So there's also advanced filters over here where you can choose how to search in a specific way. I'm gonna go and make it broad match here and then I'm gonna go over into the advanced filters. So it brings us back to over 137,000 keywords here. And if you wanted to search for something in particular, let's say you wanna search for WordPress as an example, you can do that and click apply filters. If you wanna exclude certain keywords, you can do that too. Maybe you wanna exclude free as an example and we'll just hit apply filters. And then it will filter this down and you can see now it went from over 137,000 to under 1,000. So when you take out free and you add in WordPress, it will give you these different options of what you can actually target here. Now we're gonna get into some of these numbers a little bit here in a second, but I also just wanted to show you how you can also do something else. So I'm gonna clear the filters here and bring us back to just the broad match of 137,000. I'm gonna close that as well. And over here on the left side, this is a great way to search. I use this often when I'm actually trying to narrow down the search myself. 
So let's just say you wanted to search over here and we wanted to go for a specific thing. Let's go to service as an example. So we're looking for web design and service all within the search here. So by default, we can see web design services is the top one and that's to be expected. And it gives you the volume of 3,600. Now, if you want to hover over different categories, you can see what it means. So when we hover over this, we see it says the higher the percentage, the harder it will be to achieve high rankings for each targeted keyword. And that makes a lot of sense because we can see right here, web design services brings in 3,600 searches according to the trends here within the volume for the last 12 month period. You can look at the trend here if you want to see more details, but it's basically the hardest one within this list here when it comes to keyword density because it's a sought after keyword. So what you could do from here is you can sort through and find different ones that you want to target. I would definitely recommend going for lower density ones to start out because it can affect how easy it is to rank. Another thing that I would recommend is you go through many of these ones that look interesting to you on this left sidebar here and you find ones that you think you can target that are lower keyword density. So let's just go down here and say we wanted to go to WordPress as an example. And once this loads, we're going to see what these look like. And from here, you can sort through these and try to find ones that look like it could be a fit for you. So let's just scroll down here and look. Let's look right here. So this one says WordPress web design packages, and that might be something that you offer. See, it's a lower competition for this, and it is getting 30 searches a month. Now, I know you might not think 30 is a lot, but if you can hit on 100 different articles, getting anywhere between 30 and 100 searches like this per month, you can really start to rank well for your website and get a lot of people going to it. That could be potentially thousands of more clients going to your website if you're offering a web design service in this example. So there's so many words that you can go through over here and sort through it. Honestly, it can take some time to do it, but you're doing it the right way. I've spent so much time in the past doing keyword research the wrong way before. I actually built out a website and I spent thousands of dollars building the website out and creating articles for the website. In reality, the keyword competition was so tough for the topic that I was going for. I basically had no chance of ranking for the keywords. It was so difficult to rank for them and I wasted so much money. So this can save you so much time and money when you do it right and you look at the competition closely. And I truly believe that once you go through this and you take your time and look at these keywords, you can find some real gems hidden in here. And once you start to build up your site authority, you can start to go after some more difficult keywords and target ones that get a little more search volume or that are a little bit more difficult and build up from there. I recommend starting with the easier ones and just getting that traffic flowing into your website and then start going after the higher competition ones. Get the low hanging fruit to start and then move up into the bigger keywords as you progress and start to build up more authority within your website. I would personally recommend that you find at least 50 lower competition articles to write about, especially if you're starting a new website. This is something that I go through every single time I start a new website or a blog. I go through this on SEMrush and I try to look and focus on only topics that I can find a lot of low hanging fruit type articles with little difficulty to target. And then I start building up as I go on and it's been successful for me to do it this way. So honestly, there is so much more I could show you within SEMrush, even within the keyword magic tool here. And you can look at all these different headings on the left side to see and learn more about them. Again, I really think the keyword magic tool is probably my favorite tool within this whole group, but there's a lot going on within SEMrush. And if you'd like to see me cover more topics related to SEMrush in these over here on the left side, please feel free to leave a comment below with that. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate it and I hope you have a wonderful day.